Okay, hi everybody. So if you didn't know already, you probably should know. Um, video SEO is the future. And today I'm gonna talk to you about how to do it, how to do video SEO. I think you're really gonna enjoy this. I've put a ton of time into this. I'm gonna try to connect all the different channels together. And uh, wow, I got a lot of Ignite visibility going on right now, uh, but that's okay, right? That's what I'm all about. So let's go ahead and dive into this presentation. So video SEO is the future. Here's how to do it. I'm gonna talk a little bit about video SEO in general, but I'm gonna talk a little bit about uh, social media as well. And this is gonna be a great class. I'm gonna to try to get through all this in about 15 or 20 minutes. First thing, uh, you know, I'm John Lincoln. It's a pleasure to meet you. I love digital marketing. I like to make content. I like to surf, skate, and exercise. Love my family. Love to help others. And I'm here to serve um, others through digital marketing. That's what I enjoy doing. And I'm excited to be doing that for you here today. So first thing, why video? Well, video is served in search results now more than ever, both mobile and desktop. It can be used to rank your HTML pages higher inside of Google. It can be shown in the normal search results and it can also rank really well in YouTube. And if you look on the right hand side, you can see some examples of that. That's one video that I did on SEO reporting that's had people coming in forever from SEO reporting. And it's just a really, really powerful system. It ranks in all the different areas. And that's not just in these three that I'm showing here. So today I'm gonna to talk about how to determine the right content to target, how to get videos to rank in Google and YouTube, how to promote your videos to customers. I'm not gonna go super deep into each one, but I'm gonna give you the foundation of what you need to know. So first, how do you determine the right content um, to create when you're just getting started and creating video? Well, the first thing is, you need to figure out who your customer is, where they spend time online. You need to think about what do they search for at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the journey, and what content do they like looking for when they're not looking for your services. That's going to give you a great idea of what they're looking for in the, that upper funnel area before they're even looking for your actual product or service. So this is really important. I'm going to go deeper on all this. One of the things I love is the Google Analytics data. If you don't know, when you go inside of Google Analytics, they're gonna show you all the different things that they're looking for, your customer, as far as people come to your website. But also, you know, the benchmark report's great. It's gonna show you where you are versus all your competitors. But in addition to that, when you look at social media profile data, they give you great demographics. They give you great information on the type of content that your consumers are, are liking the most. And then in addition to that, I really enjoy Pathmatic, SimilarWeb, and SpyFu. Very, very powerful tools. And then vidIQ. All of these together are going to give you an amazing look at all the different types of places your customer is and some of the content that they're looking for. But I don't want you to just stop there. Um, and really what I'm asking is that you review all the data for all these different tools and you use this in, in your strategy for who you're going to be targeting and where. Also, I highly recommend you look at SEM Rush. I'm going to show you what this looks like in a minute. The Google Questions Hub, which is a newer thing that came out in January of 2021, tells you all the different questions that people are asking that haven't been answered yet. Also ask, answer the public, kind of the same thing as, as SEM Rush, but other great data sources that will tell you what people are looking for. And then Google Search Console is going to show you what people are actually searching for as far as queries that are non-branded, um, in addition to branded, but that are specific to your website. So when we look at SEM Rush, really great. Put in a term like bikes. It tells you all the different questions that people are asking around that, all the related keywords, all the keyword variants. What you want to do is you want to get a list of all the most important questions that are gonna be upper funnel, but also important for your brand, right? That, that's, that's kind of the first step there. The question hub, this is going to be kind of an, another step that's gonna tell you all the unanswered questions that are out there on the web. The reason I love this is because you can create a video on this and you can get it ranked right away because nobody's ever even covered this topic before, right? It's new, it's easy to use, highly recommend it. Also, when you're using something like a vidIQ, which I mentioned a moment ago, that's going to give you a ton of data. Not only is it going to score how well your videos are optimized when you're putting them up so you can get, you know, a million views on a video like I did here, right? 
but it's also going to show you how much it's been shared and things like that. But if you look at the left-hand side, it will also overview YouTube and it's gonna show you all your competitors. It's gonna show you trends. It's gonna show your most viewed videos. It's gonna audit your actual channel. And it's going to really allow you to see all the different things that people want you to create content on. For example, right here, you can see all the different keyword opportunities that are out there for me to create a video on so that people can uh, search, find my videos, I can get more exposure. You can put in any keyword that you want for yourself. When you look on the right-hand side, you can see some of the top terms that people are searching for when they're coming in and looking at the Ignite Visibility YouTube channel that I've been working on for a while. Highly recommend vidIQ. So, Moving this a step further, you know, what you want to do is you want to look at the Google Analytics interest reports. You want to look at influencers in your industry. You want to look at customers' favorite media sites. You want to ask your customers. You want to know what's popular on social media. And then once you've done all that, you've really figured out the entire media landscape. You know, everywhere your customer is, you know, all the different topics that are out there. And then it becomes time for you to start thinking about what you need to create for each individual website, right? So you're going to be considering things like the video length, the video size, where the user is viewing the video, the nature of the website content, how the algorithm rates the content on the site, and does the content live forever or is it short-lived? This is actually super, super important, okay? So I want you to think about this for a second. Length, size, where the user is viewing, the nature of the website content, how the algorithm ranks content, and does that content live forever or is it short-lived? The thing is, so many people, they don't think about this stuff and they just spray videos out there. I did that for a very long time. I still do a little bit here and there and uh, I don't get as good a result as I could. So the best thing to do, if you can, is to actually create unique videos for each site. For example, when I do the digital marketing news, if I do a longer video on digital marketing news, less than 10 minutes, you know, three to 10 minutes, and I put it on LinkedIn or I put it on YouTube, it does extremely well. If I put that same video on Facebook or I put it on Instagram, it does terrible. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, somebody's not on that site to get the digital marketing news. That's not what they're looking for. But the other thing is, that type of video is not native to those platforms. You never see anybody going on there and putting stuff like that out there. So, you know, recently, if I, when I was trying to, and as I've been pushing that content so that it's a little bit, um, doing a little bit better there, cutting that down to a one minute video that's short, snappy, it's more high impact, doesn't feel as much as like a dreary digital marketing news class, it's done a little bit better. So here's how to approach it, okay? You're making video for the first time. You want to get out there. You want to create video. Here's how you go about doing it. And then I'm going to tell you about how you can market it and how you can get a ton of exposure for it. But first thing is, who's your persona, right? We talked about all those analytic tools. You need to know who your customer is and who you're targeting. What's the topic and the position in the journey when they're going to be viewing that video? That's going to allow you to dictate the type of content that you're creating there. Next, you need to actually write out the creative direction. What are you trying to make? What's the strategy there, right? Are you answering a question? Are you doing the news? Are you teaching a class? Are you covering something else that somebody else has, has accomplished that's an influencer in your industry, but not a direct competitor? These things matter, right? Then you're going to write a script, a short script. This script is a big deal because when you have a script, it makes videos so much better than off the cuff. I'm talking off the cuff right now, and that's okay for something that's longer, but if it's a script and you know exactly what you're going to be saying inside of a video or you're coaching somebody to say, it comes out much better. You need to think about this as conversion optimization. You need to think about this as something where you're actually trying to get somebody to, to accomplish something and give them value within that script. Next thing you do is you shoot the raw video give it to an editor. And then once you've done that, the editor is going to kick back to you the following things. A story that's 15 seconds or less or multiple stories so that you can post them on all the different story sites out there, right? They're gonna give you YouTube, any length, you know, usually too long on YouTube is not great. You know, somewhere in the five to 30 minute range is about right. TikTok, 
Um, Reels, 30 seconds for Reels, one minute for TikTok, Facebook, Facebook, which needs to be less than 10 minutes, Instagram, less than a minute, unless you're going IGTV, and then LinkedIn, which is less than 10 minutes, and then Twitter. Twitter can actually technically be two minutes, but shorter videos tend to do better. So they're going to spit this back to you, and maybe because you've, you've got a little bit of extra raw footage, you know, they can chop that up into multiple stories, because the more stories that you have, the better off. Story selling really means lots and lots of stories that are continuing to stay in front of somebody. It's quite the marketing challenge that stories have created. And now that they're on all the different social media sites, we need to feed them because they have tremendous exposure. Now, once you have all that, you know, you want to think a little bit about your advertising strategy. I think a lot of people think about advertising strategies as not being a good thing around organic social media or video creation. And I strongly disagree. Why put in all that time and not use them as part of your ads, right? And the thing is, is that in any ad campaign, you have a new audience, a middle audience, a warm audience, a hot audience, and a, and a past converter, right? And you want to be promoting your best stuff to audiences based off of where that content should be hitting them in the journey and based off of, you know, if it's an upper funnel question, I'm going to show you some examples of that in a little bit, or if it's a lower funnel about to convert, whatever content you're creating, you want to be pushing that out to people through advertising, not just posting stuff and hoping things stick out there. Now, as you see on the right hand side, this is actually Microsoft's audiences. And what you see here is you see affinity audiences, custom audiences, customer match audiences, demographics, in-market audiences. So you've got nurturing audiences. You have audiences of your exact customers. You have audiences all the way down to you know, remarketing. And then you have similar audiences that you can build off of your other audiences. This is big because if you are creating great content, you're investing in video, you want to be utilizing audiences like this, not just for Microsoft. You want to be doing this for YouTube, you want to be doing this for Facebook, you want to be doing this for Google Display, and so on and so forth. Next, we're getting into video best practices. And one of the things I want you to keep in mind is you are building a brand here. It could be a personal brand, it could be your marketing brand, it doesn't matter. But whatever it is, you want all the videos to have the same look and feel. You want the videos to have the same color scheme. You want the videos to have a watermark in case somebody steals them. You want the videos to have shortcuts, be fast paced. And in most cases, not all of them, long form video selling can be good in some cases. And the goal is to get somebody to interact as soon as possible and to dwell. Almost all the social algorithms up there, they want to see interactions within the first 30 seconds of the video, right? A like, a comment. And then at the end, especially, you know, Instagram is that 30, 60 second rule, right? If somebody interacts in the first 60 seconds, and then you want them to watch the entire thing. And that's why scripting comes into play instead of just making up random stuff off the cuff. Often that does not really do very well. So make sure that you keep these things in mind. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about what works in Google and what works inside of YouTube. So first, keep this in mind. You can post a video on YouTube and you can get it ranked inside of Google within hours. That's incredibly powerful. I do it all the time. Something comes out in the news, I'll make a video on it, shoots up to the top of, of Google. I'm getting tons of traffic and people are seeing uh, me as an authority in the industry. I highly encourage you to do the same thing. So here's a couple examples, and this is more of an evergreen piece of content. But if you were to search for SEO 2021 webinar, you're going to see that we've got the number one spot. We've got that you know little context thing where you can jump to a specific part in a video. You can see that the thumbnail is ranking at the top of mobile. And, and, and this is something that was also turned into micro clips for social media, a podcast, and also used for a lead generation funnel. So this webinar, this webinar went on a podcast. This webinar went on YouTube. This webinar went um, inside of Google. It's ranking inside of mobile. It was used to create a blog post and, and turn into micro clips for all the different sites out there. So really, really powerful. So if you want to rank, on YouTube and Google, the more popular your channel is, the better it's going to rank. The less competition, the better chance you rank. The more on theme your channel is, the better chance you rank. You can't be talking about everything out there in the world. You got to stay on theme, right? If it's a new topic, the quicker you get on it, the better chance you rank. The more niche the keyword or the hashtag is, the better chance you rank. The more optimized your page and video are, the better chance you rank. The more comments, likes, and embeds and views you get, the better chance that you rank. These are all things that you want to be thinking about. 
And just for the individual video optimization, I highly recommend video, vidIQ or use a template to kind of go through that process. I'll talk about that more in my next slide. But I want everybody to realize when you do this, you see a massive rise. And if you look here over the last couple months of video optimization, and we look at the Search Console report, that's up to about a quarter million uh, impressions that's happened there and driving significant amount of traffic as well. And you know, we have seen that about 50% of buyers now check YouTube before they even make a buying decision to verify a product or a service. So it's a place that you actually have to be at this point if you wanna win. Here's a nice checklist for you as you start considering doing YouTube optimization. First thing, choose a keyword. You can use SEMrush or vidIQ for that. Then you've got to shoot the video, send the video to a writer to create a blog. You're going to upload that video to YouTube, and then you're going to optimize the following elements. You're going to do the title, 60 to 70 characters, a description, 5,000 characters. You're going to do a thumbnail, which is the most important thing, a thumbnail that boom, just pops right out at you, makes it so that it cuts through the clutter. Uh, that's incredibly, incredibly important. You just have really like five or six different words. If it has more, then it's, it's too busy. Five or six high impact words that people can see in the feed there. And then you want to have tags. You want to have niche tags, middle funnel tags, and overall theme tags. So most are going to have somewhere between you know, 10 and 20 tags, but you want to make sure you cover the entire keyword universe that the video would show up for from general kind of terms in that space all the way down to niche. And then when it comes to related videos, you want to make sure you use a template. So inside of YouTube, at the end, there's something where you can click a template. The template will show you how to add related videos at the end of the video so people continue watching and a subscribe button. So highly recommend that you add that as an appendix to the end of videos. You also want to embed the video on your blog. You want to optimize the blog post for the same term, right? There's your SEO strategy. Now that can rank for SEO as well. You want to promote the video as much as possible in your ads and your newsletters to channel subscribers. You want to add it to popular playlists. You want to make sure you have an HTML sitemap on your site so that the, the website crawl, uh, that Google crawls that page. They see the video embed and they start ranking it. And then you want to get micro clips of the video made so that you can do distribution all around the web. All that stuff, that is your strategy. Take this checklist, use it for yourself. So what do you do now, right? I want you to all start video. You got to do video. It's the fastest growing medium. If you can get, get good at it, you're going to love it, right? Uh, short form video is the most powerful marketing medium that you can have right now. I, I really feel that's the way. Now, you got to align with a, a good editor or learn how to edit yourself. I recommend you, you align with a good editor. And keep in mind, if you don't want to be on screen, you can get somebody else on screen or you can not even be on screen and you can just use B-roll and you can pr produce entire videos that don't have people in it. That's, in, that's entirely possible. And I've seen quite a few uh, different companies do a good job there. You wanna make sure that all of your topics are relevant. You wanna make sure that you have a script or at least a general outline and you wanna pump out the content and just watch your presence grow. But make sure that anything you're putting out is as quality as possible because um, you know, even though you want to make a lot of content, you don't want to put out anything that is uh, poor quality content as much as you can. That's it for how to grow with video. I hope that this was interesting to you. I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I can't wait to see you soon. If you like this, I would love to hear about it. Give me a shout online. I love meeting people. That's why I'm here. Have a great day. Bye.